Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. Boy, I must really say, yeah, I must say, if you've been tuning into all these videos, um, I admire your dedication. I really hope they'll help, and uh, I don't know, if I had an extra, you know, 10, 15 minutes of lecture every time, maybe we'd get something done, you can watch, get more done, you can watch these at your leisure. Uh, well, anyway, hope you are. Well, if you're listening, obviously you are. Uh, okay, so chapter 14, kinetics, how quickly a reaction goes can be described uh, pretty pretty accurately with uh, mathematics and some uh, yeah so put on your mathematical thinking caps and let's go here I have two reactions one on the left one on the right I got a clock in the middle it runs from 0 to 16 to 32 to you know, 46 or 7 or whatever and as it goes along A and B create C in the fast reaction and X and Y create Z in the slow reaction I can kind of see that, that uh, this one's fast because uh, after 16 seconds, I've created four units of C. After 32 seconds, I've created one, two, three, four, five, six units of C. And then after about 48 or whatever seconds, it's gone totally to completion. There's no more A and B left over, only C. Whereas comparing to the slow reaction, uh, no units of Z in the beginning, one unit of Z, two units of Z, three units of Z. It looks like uh, this reaction is laying on about halfway by the time the clock ends. So in that sense, uh, this little cartoon describes a fast reaction on the left and a slow reaction on the right. We can use machines like this to measure the progress of a colored reaction, a, a reaction of a colored species, either consuming the color or creating the color. And then in my sample here in the middle, um, it gets either darker or lighter, and I analyze that light passage with a computer. I'll show you a demonstration of that in class sometime. Uh, this one I don't have a setup easily to demonstrate with, but it's a gas chroma chromatogram. You inject a little bit of gas over here, and it goes round and round, 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 this tube through the oven, gets through the, through the tube and is detected over here. And uh, the computer analyzes how much of a particular gas, be it a reactant or product, and we can use that as well to analyze the progress of reaction. Here's some data for a reaction. 2N2O5 in solution goes to 4NO2 in solution and creating some bubbles of O2 gas. I see a mole per liter molarity, 1 molar, 0.88 molar on down the line. So I start off with a lot of the reactant and it goes down and down and down. And 0 seconds, 200 seconds, so increments of 200 seconds all the way up to 2,000 seconds. I wrote over here the average rate of the reaction is described as the uh, rise over run comparing the the change in molarity to the change in time. Yeah, that's the average steepness of the line between the, these two periods, uh, the 600 and 800, or 1800 and 2000. And again, since it's just rise over run, I just take, this is the rise on the y-axis, divided by the run on the x-axis. The x-axis is almost always time. Uh, what, 0.4 millimolar per second, whereas down here, it slows way down to 0.2 millimolar per second. I'm suspicious up here. If I did this math, that'd be 0.12 divided by 200 seconds. I think that would be 0.0. I'm sorry, 0.6 millimolar. So the reaction almost always almost always goes fast in the beginning, and then slows down and down and down as you go through time. Most reactions almost always go faster. Well, anyway, this is the average rate of the reaction between two time periods. But it's not as accurate, perhaps, as zeroing in and saying, what's the rate of the reaction at any one instant? At any one instant, I could take the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point. So it looks like the tan. you know what tangent is? Tangent's a straight line that touches the curve only in one spot. So we're talking calculus now, actually. If I knew the function of this line, I could take the derivative uh, and evaluate it at any one point to find the the steepness of the tangent, how fast the reaction was going. So the slope's pretty steep up here, and then less, 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 and then less. Eventually, the slope almost goes to zero, because the reaction goes to completion, and no more reactant goes away. But in any case, they gave us some actual numbers, 5.4 molarity per second, or actually 0.54 millimolar per second, and down here it's only 0.27. So this one's uh, half as fast down here as it is up here. Oh, interesting. Reactions almost always go fast in the beginning, and they slow down over time. Here's another reaction. 
so much data I can hardly make heads or tails of it. So 2NO2 gas decomposed to give 2NO gas and uh, an O2 uh, molecule. So this one starts out high and goes low, lots of reactant. This one's, these both start out at zero and go up and go up. Boy, I could pick any two time periods and do an average rate during these two times. So this difference divided by this difference would give me my rate of decrease of this, but we already did that. Let's try something new. Let's look at a graph. On this graph, um, this, is, this data is graphed on this graph, right? And the time is down on the x-axis. That's almost always the case. And the concentrations are up on the y-axis. Notice the NO2 decreases quickly in the beginning and then slows down. And the NO, the NO increases quickly and then tapers off. And the O2 also increases, but not as quickly. I wonder why the O2 doesn't increase as quickly. Could it have anything to do with two of these give two of these and one of these? Interesting. In other words, if the steepness of the tangent line right here is 23.6 micromolar per second, I, did the, I based my calculation on this right here, rise over run, that the steepness of this line is exactly the same. It's the same time and the same two of these give two of these. So this is decreasing at that rate. This is increasing at that same rate. We didn't do this one. I didn't get the data for that, but I could. That would be interesting. I would think this would be increasing at only half that, so that would be 12 whatever. Over here, another calculation. Um, this one is uh, increasing at 8.7 micromolar per second. This one is also increasing, but only half as much because, again, why is this only half as much as this? Why is this only increasing at the slower rate? Again, because of the one there. All right, let's look at one more complicated setup. So, in general, a reaction 2A plus 3B give 1C and 6Ds. I totally made that up, but it's a good example, I suppose. The rate of disappearance of A, the rate of disappearance of B, these are disappearing, they're reactants. The rate of appearance of C, the rate of appearance of D, these are products that are being created. So the question is, are they related to each other? And the answer is, yeah, they are. They're not exactly equal. This one's disappearing, this one's disappearing, this one's appearing, this one's appearing, but the 2 and the 3 and the 1 and the 6, that certainly plays a role. And here's the answer. It looks a little complicated when you first see it like calculus, because it, <laughs> you could say it phrase it in the language of calculus. Um, the rate of disappearance of A, the rate of disappearance of B, there's equal signs now, the rate of appearance of C, the rate of appearance of D, but I put a one-sixth here, I put a one-third here, a negative actually, and a negative one-half here. The negatives just designate that these are reactants, reacting and decreasing. It's not obvious why there should be a three there, and a two there, and a, a one there, and a one-sixth there. Here I phrased it in the language of mathematics, calculus. DA by DT, DB by DT, DC by DT, DD by DT. And they're a little changing, little incremental parts. Let's say, for example, that I had, uh, I knew the, dis the rate of disappearance of A was 12 units. Really, I'm going to stick a negative in front of that because it's disappearing. Uh, we say, we could say the rate of the reactions, uh, negative for the react, negative of the reactants, positive of the products torr per second, molarity per second, I don't know. So what do I have? The same equation as from above, but I stuck a negative 12 right in there. This is disappearing. And then could I say, could I, if I knew this one, could I relate it to this one and or this one and or this one in succession? The answer is yeah, you can. So there's a one third there, there's a one half there. The negatives sort of cancel each other because B is disappearing just like A is disappearing. The answer solves to 18. So are you surprised that B is disappearing faster than A is disappearing? Again, for the C, I put the, the negative 12 for A, the rate of disappearance of A. What's the rate of uh, rate of appearance of C? Well, it's just uh, half that, which is 6. And what about D? Put the disappearance of A here, the rate of appearance of D here. As the equation said, 1 sixth here. 
one half here. That still seems a little confusing. So let me let me phrase it this way. Here's my original equation. I was told this was 12. If this is a 2 and this is a 1, guess why this is only half of this or this number, or I'm sorry, take this number and this number is twice that big. Or, in other words, 6 is 3 times more than 2. So 36 is 3 times more than 12. Or 18, or B, is 3 times more than C. So this is appearing at the rate of 6. This is disappearing at the rate of 3 times that, 18. Some other quick examples. If I knew that H2 was disappearing at negative, I just totally made that up, 3 millimolar per second, how quickly would this one be disappearing? How quickly would this be appearing? Feel free to pause the video and ask yourself that question right now. And the answer, congratulations if you pause the video. 3 millimolar disappearance here. This is a 1 here and 1 here and a 2 here. So this would be appearing twice the rate of those disappearances. Another question. Uh, one of these, three of these, create two of these. One molecule of this, three molecules of this, two molecules of this. Let's say this is appearing at 40 tor per second. How quickly would this one and this one be disappearing? Let's see. Well, there's a 2 here, there's a 1 here. So if this is a 40, would you argue with me if I told you that was 20 tor per second? Still, the question remains, what's the rate of disappearance of the H2? Aha. Well, if this one's a 1 and this one's a 3, is this number not 3 times more than this one? It is. And I could say it's as simple as that, but it's not so simple until you practice. Uh, shoot, I have one more example here. I don't know why. Just for entertainment. No, that's not even. What is that? Let's skip it. Oh my goodness, look at all that data. I can't make heads or tails of that. I can find average average rates between two times, time periods. Say the rate of uh, disappearance of H2 between 20 and 30 seconds. That's, that's a possibility. Oh, they did it over here. But more convenient to look at a graph. And here it is. Let me shrink this bad boy down a little bit so you can see it all in one frame. And again, on the on the um, on the x-axis is time. On the well, I can't quite make it all down all the way down there. Trust me, it's time down here. And uh, let's see, so here's my equation, H2 plus I2 gives 2HI. Um, this is the appearance of HI, and this is the disappearance of H2. I guess it would be similar to the disappearance of I2. But look at this instant right here, this is 50 seconds. At t equals 50 seconds, I just took a tangent line and found the slope of that tangent line, or I found the slope, they gave me the data. The rise over the run, the rise over the run, the rise over the run. Here the slope is 14 millimolar per second, 0 .0, 0 0.014 molarity per second, and down here at this at the same time period, the slope is half that value. Seven is half of 14. So are we, surpri are we surprised that this and this are disappearing at half the rate that this is appearing? Because there's a two right there that tells me anyway that uh, this is being produced twice as fast as those two are disappearing. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you pretty soon.